This audio fiction may contain elements not suitable for children. Listener discretion is advised. So, we can explore this idea here on the last day of Premont celebration. And Kia points to the chalkboard and his chart. These facts and figures explain all of what we have to do to enjoy ourselves and to remain in the spirit of the celebration. <laughs> Did you make a chart to teach us how to have fun? How else does one keep track of facts and figures? Ah, <laughs> uh, right, of course. Go on. So, we wear the masks Michaela's made us, and then we follow the strike. Hmm. You feel certain you want to go through with this? It does add a touch of chaos to your normal procedures. Notice the chart. It is organized chaos. Who's going to tell him that he's missing the point? Let him have his fun. He's trying to assist us in our fun, too. So, if we follow this chart, we celebrate like mortals do? Yes, and we can share stories of what happened. That sounds like a lovely change of pace. Now, please enjoy these masks. They will show that you are doing the celebrations, too. Mikhail begins handing out masks for the other deities. So, what all are we supposed to do? The same things we always do when we are summoned. Give advice and assist mortals. Oh, this will be wonderful. We just have to hope we get called. My envoys will take care of the ferrying of souls for the day. I am free to celebrate as well. Uh, will the mortals know these are pranks? Probably not. Doesn't that make it more fun? That depends on your perspective, I suppose. Misho sits at his desk and looks down at the lack of progress on his speech. He taps his fingers impatiently. Uh, why is this so difficult? He starts a doodle on the parchment. The Cosm Dom looks down at the casting symbol. Ah, oh, there's an idea. Misho closes his eyes. To rule over chaos, to rule over chaos, to rule over chaos. As he intends, a deity visits him in his office. All right, so what is the problem? I have to persuade the people I rule to see an issue my way. I want them to understand my point of view and to see that there's more on the line than what- Yes, go on. Finish your thought, dear child. You're not in Kia. <laughs> no, no. But I am a deity here to assist you. Oh, alright. Uh, how are you going to help them? Which deity are you? I'm Mera. Now, for persuading the citizens of your land, why not explain the issue exactly as you mean it to be understood? Because they don't understand that sending soldiers to fight off invaders means more immediate life loss, when I do not know what the invading army has in store for me! They are incensed I have not immediately counterattacked. If it's a death toll you fear, remind them of just how life and death works. Excuse me? Remind them that everybody dies, and that there is no natural way to bring somebody back when I have ferried them to the afterlife. You think that'll work? Won't it scare them? It may scare them, but you are charismatic and an earnest mortal. Death is permanent, and you want to avoid sending others to an early grave, which is commendable. Uh... uh What's the matter? Uh, this makes sense, but... I don't want to terrify my people. Don't fret about that. It is the truth, after all. Mara disappears from the mortal plane. Uh, maybe I should call Frankie again. What are we going to do? Help me draw a summoning circle. What? Why? We only have a few seconds before we're trampled to death. Standing there and panicking has been a great contribution. But I motion that we try to do something. I meant that gods aren't likely to answer a summoning. Well, I'd rather try than sit around doing nothing and wait for death. Cassandra finishes the casting circle. 
She stands inside. Fear is motivation in your name! What? You're calling for Barbus? Yes, to scare off the stampede! The immediate area becomes cold. A flash of light starts in the circle, then quickly dies out, and a goddess appears. Given Barbus is a god and presumably male. <sighs> oh, dirt. Ugh. Yes, yes. What do you want? Uh, not to die to that herd. Preeti turns toward the stampeding animals. Yes, that seems like it would be painful and result in your death. What a downer. Ugh. So, are you going to help us? Yes, of course. You stand here. And you here. Preeti moves the two mortals into the casting circle. Now, focus only on what you want to happen. What? I'm the deity. I'm the expert here. Focus on what you want, or die. Uh, right. The herd ran through the area. The ground shook beneath her combined weight and the rapid movement. A thick cloud of dust was created over the area. Gregory and Cassandra coughed repeatedly. They waved the debris away from their faces. The dust eventually cleared. The pair looked around at the immediate area. The goddess was gone, and the stragglers ran through the area, but around their casting circle. Which one was that? My guess is Preeti. Instead of Barbus? Why would you get her instead? I have no idea. I didn't want to question it when we might die, but I have never heard of that happening before. Hmm. Maybe if I talk to him, I will feel better about conjuring. The acolyte steps into the casting circle. Still feeling uncertain of herself, she takes a deep breath, then focuses on summoning the deity. Growth and expansion are your greatest gifts. The room becomes cold. Lucy looks around, then tilts her head when she realizes she had somehow summoned a goddess instead of Mikhail. Um, who are you? I thought I had summoned Mikhail. Maybe I was so nervous I wrote down the wrong incantation. I am the love goddess. I came to render aid. Oh, so I did write down the wrong words. No, no. I answered the summons. But how are you going to help me feel better about my conjuring exam? I'm going to be judged by several mage professors. Now, now. Panels of judges respond to one thing above all else. Skill. <laughs> Charm. How is that going to help me get better and pass my test? It will definitely help you pass. Just be charming. Sweet, all around winsome, maybe a bit whimsical. That, that's, that's not me at all. Of course not. Or I would have said, be yourself instead. This is not helpful. You are going to marry your best friend's brother. <laughs> Excuse me? What? What does that have to do anything, do with anything? <laughs> You've had a crush on him since you were a child. Very precocious. How are these things related? All you have to do is get through tomorrow. So imagine living out that dream. If you can be charming and happy while you are taking your exam, you will get to the point where you get married, have children, then become the Mikhail Cleric in the resort town. All of that happens to me? You just need to get through life, one tomorrow at a time. And please remember that love is always relevant. Except during an exam, where I have to conjure what my teachers tell me. Even then, I promise, it will work. I doubt that. I promise. If you do not pass, summon me again, and I will grant you a wish. 
But I can't charm the judges and make them forget that conjuring is what I am worst at. Kasi kisses her finger, then touches the mortal's forehead. <laughs> now you can! W what How? What was that? I gave you my favor. You can now charm people. The love goddess disappears from the room. Lucy stares at the summoning circle with incredulity. This didn't help at all. The three messengers from the Nerinus domain stopped at the board of the Aubrus domain forest. They stumbled upon a camp of bandits that had staked out a piece of territory along the trading path. Not seeing any other way out of their predicament, Hugo knelt down and scrawled a summoning circle. <clears throat> Under the shadow of the thief. If you know how to summon him, then yes, do it. What's our backup plan if he decides he's going to toy with us? Uh, I guess we try negotiating then? We're going to die, aren't we? Hugo loudly clears his throat to hush his companions. <clears throat> Under the shadow of the thief. The three mortals silently hoped the god of deceptions was not about to mock them for his own amusement. The area turned cold. Here we go. To the three mortals' surprise, a goddess appeared. Yeah, yeah. This may go better for us than we thought. Maybe. Sorry, we were expecting Premod. Which deity are you? I am the nature goddess. Avani! Our great goddess! Maybe because we're all part wood elf, we got Avani? Regardless of why we summoned Avani, we did. Yes. Now, what help do you need? There are bandits here. We intended to ask Premod to make it so we can move through their camp undetected. Can you help us out with this? As you are my children, I would be glad to help you for this plight. Thank you. Avani walks toward the bandits. The three messengers panic, then hurry after her. The idea was for them not to know we were here. Why? I am a goddess. They cannot hurt me. The bandits begin to react to the four strangers' presence. Avani snaps her fingers. The bandits are then snared by vines. A wave of soil snuffs out their campfire. Avani walks ahead of the messengers. This works, I suppose? <laughs> Let's not complain. Instead, follow Avani, huh? Let's go. Agreed. The messengers hurry after the nature goddess. Avani, thank you for helping us. But aren't they going to be trapped there? Oh, my magic will wear off eventually. That makes sense. Yes, and we are grateful for your assistance. But why didn't you disappear after lending us your aid? Nobody ever summons me to a forest. I want to enjoy it before I return home. This went better than if we had summoned Premod, didn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. So we summon Avani when we need help from now on? That seems like the best course of action on our parts. Oh, yes! Summon me when you need help. Oh, I love walking around and enjoying the smell of a mortal plane. Well, that's settled then. Not entirely. Premod may still appear to answer my summons. He, he likes doing that. Damn. I thought we found a way around that. It was a nice idea while it lasted. <sighs> All right. Everything is ready. Just need to say the summoning spell. Melita references her notes. For what is right by me. To the High Elf's surprise, the summoning circle glows. The room grows cold. Then a figure appears in the middle of the circle. Uh, uh, oh, good. Great God Ta here. I require your assistance with a matter of virtues and morals. I beg of you. What matter do you need counseled on, young mortal? I learned of a horrible secret being kept from a friend of mine. I do not want to cause my friend pain by revealing the matter. 
Unless I have no other choice. Is it righteous of me to approach the betrayer and give them time to tell the truth? Hmm. That could be. Is there a better way to handle this situation? Barbus conjures a crimson orb. He sets the orb on the ground, then produces a box from his robes. I do have a different approach, yes. What is it? And that orb? The orb is my pet Rugaru, Fetch. The approach involves her and using these globules. What is a Rugaru? <laughs> Fetch materializes out of the orb. Melita jumps backward in surprise. She turns into mortals' worst fears. Barbus offers Melita the box. Melita takes it, then looks inside. Throw one of these at the secret keeper. Why would I do that? I... What will these do? These will make it so the Secret Keeper will see their worst fears everywhere until they confess their secrets. You want me to scare him into telling the truth? That seems cruel. It is not as if we are not going to tell them how to reverse the spell. But he'll keep seeing things that scare him. Well, not only that. What else will these do? If he keeps the secret, he will become paranoid about his fear. Expecting it everywhere until he is compelled to confess his sins. This doesn't feel moral or nice. <laughs> moral and nice? Who am I, Tahir? Let's go, mortal. We have a friend of yours to terrorize into truth-telling. Barbus and Fetch leave the room. This sounds horrible. I do not want to find out the consequences of saying no to... I can only assume it's Barbus. <laughs> Oh, God. Reluctantly, Melita follows the god and his pet. She will know what to do. Unforgiving and ever-changing is your essence. The dirt casting circle glows. Seconds later, a robed figure appears. Ah, thank you for hearing my call. I was hoping for your blessing. The wood elf looks up at the deity. You, uh, you are not Mevani. No, well, I'm not. What problem made you seek a blessing? I I'm not certain if anybody but Mevani can help with it. At least let me try. I enjoy solving problems. All right. Uh, uh, this plant here is being edged out by fungus invasions and other aggressive plant species. I wanted it Avani's blessing to help this plant by moving it to a better environment. Hmm. Uh, do, uh, do you think you can help? Perhaps. But not yet. And Kia begins walking. He motions for the wood elf to follow. Finley shrugs and complies with the deity. Uh, we need to find a library or a temple to myself or Manu. Um, why? I am a druid. Because you have not researched this plant enough. 
Do you know its classifications down to the family and species? Do you know if it will thrive in the environment you have selected for it? Do you know the soil type of this area and where you intend to move it? I'm... Uh, no. For all you know, it will be in vain because the plant may not survive being repotted. The druid falls silent. Lucky for you, categorizing and cataloging is my specialization. Fret not, druid. Finley glances back at the casting circle. I could um, always try for Vani later. After this, you could use all this great new knowledge in your day-to-day -day life as a druid. 